Okay then, so on this latest video looking at the ideologies, uh, we're going to be looking at socialism and the economy. And we'll be looking at areas of agreement and areas of disagreement among socialists over how the economy um, should be run and operated. So the first point to make is instead of agreement is that all socialists uh, see economic activity uh, important in determining social structure, people's life chances and also the impact they have on human nature. Those parrots are well out here, aren't they? Okay, and most um, socialists believe that capitalism, or capitalism even, uh, has negative consequences on people's social structure, life chances and also on affecting their human nature. They tend to see uh, capitalism as being inefficient and wasteful. So rather than people working together, harnessing all their skills and stuff for a common aim, it leads to competition, which can then lead to duplication and creates a lot of waste. Um, this is mainly agreed uh, by uh, Marxists and social democrats. So Marxists, for example, very much believe in the evils of capitalism, um, the fact that it has such a negative impact on human nature, it leads to uh, massive inequalities in society. Uh, but gradual uh, socialist people like Webb and also social democrats like Crossland, they too believe that uh, capitalism does create economic inequalities, does create um, all sorts of problems in society and they also believe it is quite wasteful as well, especially capitalism that's kind of untamed. I think Webb calls it unfettered capitalism. So capitalism without any constraints, social democrats will agree with Marxists that it does lead to inefficiencies, waste um, and does lead to uh, some horrendous and horrible consequences. Um, you may have, men may have noticed that I haven't mentioned Anthony Giddens in this bit and the third way because they, they see this as less of a problem. Now, they do agree that capitalism does cause some problems and it does create inequalities. Um, however, uh, they do believe that capitalism generally is much more positive than the other socialists. An area of disagreement on the importance of um, capitalism uh, is basically what to do about it. For the revolutionary socialists, uh, Karl Marx and Luxembourg, they wanted to get rid of capitalism altogether. Capitalism creates all these problems I mentioned before. You cannot compromise with capitalism. Um, if you give cap capitalism an inch, they'll take a mile. And so basically what you need to do is to get rid of it. Cut it out of society, cut it out of the economy and start again. And of course the way to do that is through having a revolution. So revolutionary socialists believe you cannot compromise with capitalism. It's such a pernicious, is that the right word, such an evil kind of system. It has to be completely got rid of, cleansed from society and the economy, so then you can build um, a different future. For Webb, she disagrees with the idea of a revolution. Uh, she, as I said before, she thinks revolutions are quite messy and she wants to take over the state gradually. But then she wants to kind of really control capitalism. I suppose she wants to gradually kind of get rid of it over a period of time. She supports, for example, um, wide scale nationalisation of uh, all industries, uh, the state very much involved in redistributing money. I suppose almost kind of, I suppose like the suffocation of capitalism, I suppose, is what she kind of advocates. Uh, for Crossland and Giddens, they disagree with this analysis. Um, yes, capitalism is, you know, isn't great, it has big problems, but they also see the benefits of capitalism. Uh, capitalism does create quite a lot of wealth and quite a lot of money, for example. And Crossland in particular supports this idea of a mixed economy. So we'll talk about this in the next section, but basically an economy whereby you have some nationalised key industries, but you also allow the private sector to flourish as well. And so basically, I suppose he's arguing that you can compromise with capitalism. Uh, you can limit the worst effects of, of capitalism by having some state intervention, um, taxing outrageous uh, profits, giving money to the poorest in society, um, the state being very much involved in redistributing the resources of capitalism in order to kind of deal with the inequalities. So whereas Marxists basically see capitalism should be got rid of, 
Costland says, no, let's work with capitalism. Let's use the benefits of capitalism to then deal with some of the negative consequences of capitalism. And he foresaw the state being an important role in doing that. Now, Giddens and the Third Way, uh, they reject all the above, basically. Um, although I suppose there's some agreement with Crossland uh, to some extent. They see that the wealth from capitalism is really beneficial. Capitalism promotes individualism and it, provo and it promotes uh, you know, people doing um, as they please and freedom. Uh, but again, they do see the negative consequences. And people like Giddens and the Third Way, they do argue that some of the wealth from capitalism can be used to help uh, the most poorest in society. So benefits, for example, can be targeted at the poorest in society in order to help them to achieve in life. But they do reject Crossland's idea of like a big brain state, you know, a state which is redistributing lots of money, saying what they think is best uh, to try and reduce these inequalities. They're much more in favour of kind of very targeted support um, for those who are in most uh, kind of need, I suppose. So, all socialists agree that capitalism has negative consequences, but then they disagree, I would say to quite a large extent, over what to do about it. Do you have your revolution and start again? Do you have a mixed economy? Or do you kind of say, oh yeah, yeah it does cause problems, let's just give a bit of money to the poor to try and deal with the worst consequences. Okay, a second area of agreement amongst um, most socialists in particular, probably not Giddens, but the other socialists, is that private profit can be exploitative. The idea that under capitalism you have private enterprise and of course people want to maximise their profits and to maximise your profits you have to reduce costs and very often that means workers' rights. And so they argue that the working class often is kind of exploited by the other classes in a capitalist system. Now, Marx, Crossland and Webb agree um, on this particular view that capitalism is basically exploitative of the workers. Uh, Webb argues that the economy cannot be run by an unfettered capitalism because it basically is built upon the exploitation of the working classes. Uh, Giddens is less uh, concerned about this, although to some extent there must be some recognition that it's exploitative Otherwise, why would the Blair government have introduced things to try and protect the working classes? You know, things like the minimum wage, for example, uh, which obviously to try and stop private companies from exploiting the workers by paying them, you know, the bare minimum, if you like. But having some kind of minimum wage, you're creating some kind of level there for what people should be paid. So even the third way do recognise that private profit can be built upon the exploitation of the workers and therefore some kind of intervention is needed. However, as you might not be too surprised to find, uh, there are big disagreements among socialists, um, again largely on what should be done about it. So for Marx and Luxembourg, they wanted to abolish all private property, so when you have your revolution, private property is kind of banned. Uh, people cannot make private profits and therefore there can be no exploitation of the working classes because there's no private profits to be made. To a large extent, Webb is kind of in agreement, although she wants to kind of nationalise everything. So rather than having a revolution, you do it gradually, but then the state takes over all uh, industries. So again, that's a way of preventing um, exploitation of the working classes. This is rejected by Crossland and also by Giddens. Crossland uh, was afraid of too much nationalisation. He said that Webb's view that everything should be nationalised would create a dull technocratic state and it would limit people's freedoms. He's much more in favour of what's known as the mixed economy, which is basically the economy which was developed after 1945. This idea that you have some nationalised industries mainly for kind of key um, assets, I suppose. So things like the railways, water, electricity, gas, things which everybody needs. Um, he said you shouldn't be making private profit over, you know, selling electricity to people or any of these other kind of basic needs. But other areas, uh, which are not kind of the essential um, services, they should be in private hands and there should be private competition and all the other things of that. 
So this idea of this mixed economy, certain things are nationalised, things which are ca kind of affect everyone, fundamental to people's lives, like water, then other things should be in private hands. So you know, if you want to go to JD Sports, or you want to go to another shop or whatever, then they should be in private hands. And he also supports this idea of Keynesian economics, this idea uh, that the state should be involved in redistributing money, uh, helping those who are the poorest in society, a welfare state being run by the state. Um, so this mixture of private and public. And he argued that this was the best way to ensure people have freedom. But also it's a way that the wealth of capitalism can then be used to benefit everybody. Capitalism creates this huge wealth. Private companies are probably the best people, you know, at buying stuff and selling stuff to people. Uh, the money they make can then be taxed by the state and then that money can then be used to benefit uh, everybody through things like National Health Service, providing good railway services, water supply, um, benefits for those who have fallen into misfortune, etc, etc. Giddens rejects this. Okay, The third way, um, they support a much freer um, liberal competition. So they're not in favour of nationalisation. Remember, it was Blair in 1994, was it five, who got rid of Clause 4, this commitment of Labour to uh, nationalise key industries. And he argued that capitalism is the best form of wealth generator. Let capitalism and private uh, ownership create that wealth. The state, if it wishes to, can tax those industries to some extent to help the poorest. But the best way to create wealth is to allow kind of, I suppose it's unfettered capitalism, which uh, Webb was so afraid of. He also makes the point that society and the world has changed as well since the 1970s. He argues that with globalisation, the power of the nation state is limited anyway. And so you can't really nationalise most or all key industries because of the globalisation and this kind of competition from throughout the world. I suppose you see that to some extent, haven't we, with the big internationals kind of trying to get to where we're paying tax by being based in like the United States, either they might sell a lot of products um, in the UK or elsewhere. So the issue over private hands, again, the Social Democrats through to Marx disagree that too much kind of uh, private property is a problem. People trying to make private profit is going to exploit the poor. They disagree on what to do. Do we have a revolution or do we accept kind of a compromise and have some nationalised industries and some privatised industries? And then, of course, Giddens rejects even that and says, actually, chill your beans. Let's allow privatisation um, and let's just make sure the state helps those who are the poorest in society. Um, the third area, which I'm not really going to go into because I've done this in a previous video, is about equality. So all socialists do agree that economic activity um, should lead to some kind of economic equality. So capitalism creates these great inequalities in society and what socialists believe is that either through the state or other means, greater equality should come about. Now where they disagree of, is over what type of equality and the extent. Do you have absolute equality or equality of opportunity? Again, for more details on this particular point, listen to the previous video uh, I made uh, where I discussed equality. So I think in essence, I think what you probably argue in essays is that socialists disagree to quite a large extent, especially if you're comparing like the third way with the Marxists, but even Crossland uh, with the Marxists is, is very different as well. I suppose the, the essence again, a bit like with some of the other uh, points we've made, is that for revolutionaries, they want to get rid of capitalism. The whole notion of capitalism is bad and evil. Whereas the third way, and to some extent Crossland, they believe that we can actually use capitalism and we can benefit from the good things it does. It's not entirely bad. It does create lots of wealth. And what we can do is to use that money to then target those um, who have seen the negative consequences of capitalism. So I would argue there's quite a lot of disagreement amongst socialists about what to do about the problem. Um, and even to some extent how big a problem it is. But most sources do have some agreement that economic activity has a big impact on human nature and that private property is exploitative. They then disagree um, over what to do about it.